Hi guys, Raptor here, and this was a request by Name and Address Withheld. And if you'd like to request a song, movie, or album for me to review, hit up the Rap Critic or Going Off Podcast Kofi links in the link tree below. So let's talk about Dizzy Rascal. Now, I'll admit, I'm not deep into the UK grime scene like I am in American hip hop, so the most I usually directly hear about who's making noise over there is through like message boards and whatnot. And for the longest time, the most consistent name I'd see was Dizzy Rascal, one of the main artists credited with bringing grime from pirate radio to the UK's mainstream. And after digging into some of the albums of this guy that many would say is a general representation of the grime sound, I, uh... Yeah, I, I don't think this is doing it for me. Bonkers. Sorry for the less than enthused response if you're a UK listener out there, but the typical grime song I've come across of his just doesn't really appeal to me like that. And if you're currently an outsider to the subgenre, you might find it a little jarring yourself. Often the production of grime is faster paced than the average modern rap song, which is owed to the subgenre coming up in the early 2000s around other up-tempo Euro dance music genres like house, jungle, drum and bass, uh, all that really dense pulsing electro dance music. You know, the stuff that makes you feel like you've been transported to a dingy mid-90s Euro trash nightclub uh, where the speakers are all blown out and you're zoning out on ecstasy under the scuzzy tinge of blinking crackling neon light. And if this more blaring style of music is your thing, that's cool, but by itself it's just not my cup of tea most of the time. That said, whenever I'm in the mood and can appreciate some garage or drum and bass for what it's doing, the appeal is the music's intensity, it's got a commanding presence. And in fact, I, I think that's the issue I've come across when listening to Rascal Rap. By nature of having to match the speed and intensity of the beat, his delivery gets higher and more frenzied, which makes his voice take on a bit of a more shrill tone that just makes it a rough listen for me. And unfortunately, I think for a lot of people, that specific additional timbre of his accent into the mix of that shriller tone makes it a coarse listen to those who aren't from the area and already acclimated to the sound of the accent. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not to say I don't enjoy any UK MCs. In fact, I've gotten into a couple cats recently like Lil Sims and Ocean Wisdom. But I realize with them and other UK rappers I've enjoyed, they're rapping on more relaxed beats where their flows are chilled out in a manner that lets you enjoy the grace notes in their accents. It's a smoother, more accommodating sound they usually go for. But when it's over these big four on the floor beats, they're so pounding and attention grabbing on their own, you really need to be doing something lyrically that matches that power. And I gotta say, the lyricism itself from Dizzy is, you know, just kind of okay. I mean, he's not whack by any means. I, I certainly hear some wordplay and multis in there, but he never really goes all the way in with the insane flows or jaw-dropping punchlines or outlandish over-the-top braggadocio often enough to consistently match the epic beat work. And topic-wise, he usually rarely elevates things above the average boilerplate lyrics about cars, cash, and hoes, just with British slang instead. And when you put together the blown-out bass, aggravating drum hits, bleeding sun-dried synths, and all those other musical aesthetics that make his discography sound like he's perpetually stuck in a scene from that Run Lola Run movie, I'm sorry, but it adds up to a sound I typically just can't get into. Except when it comes to today's song. In Dirty Cash, all the traits I find off-putting in every other one of his songs are absolutely irresistible here. Taking its sample from a jaunty late 80s crossover hit, Money Talks, from a British dance music group called The Adventures of Stevie V. Although, now that I hear him back to back, it doesn't sound like they changed that much other than adding some synths, but honestly, it's probably because the original song is just that goddamn good of a groove. It's one of those hypnotizingly catchy hooks that as soon as I heard it on this track, I could have sworn I'd heard it before in a movie or something, but no, I never heard this before writing this episode. I think the hook's melody just imprinted on my brain so immediately, it feels like I had to have heard it somewhere else for me to be singing right along with it by the time the second repeat happened the very first time I heard it. And as well, the dope beat work creates the perfect setting for Dizzy's verses, which has him showcasing a calmer, more controlled flow and the most poignantly written lyrics I've ever heard him put to a track. Everybody wants to be famous, nobody wants to be nameless, nameless. As the verse begins, the MC dives into the reckless mindset of people who envy the wealthy and try to replicate the trappings of their carefree lifestyle. But he quickly brings up how this desire to flex like the rich folks ends up accumulating a debt that traps them in financial instability. And as much as we in the lower classes hear about how important it is for us to be fiscally responsible no matter what, you know what though? It sucks, man. Being poor really fucking sucks. 
I know, an understatement of the century here, but it's the fact of the matter. It really sucks to just be scraping by while constantly seeing affluent people on TV and in real life living it up with seemingly no real problems. So sometimes you get bit with the envy bug and as soon as you have a little extra cash or some space on your credit card, it feels cathartic to spend it on something that lets you feel for a few minutes like you're part of that worry-free rich person stratosphere. But if you spend your money in the same absent-minded way rich people are able to do with no consequence, you're left under a growing mountain of debt with no way to pay it down. So the only way you feel you can have a little bit of freedom is to scrounge up what little you have to experience that taste of rich person luxury again, and the cycle continues. Oh, wow. Rhyming a word with itself, huh? What was it, just too strenuous to come up with a word that rhymed with weekend? Although I gotta say, I do love some of the slang you hear like this in grime music. Cause the word screw face is just such a perfect representative term for the scrunched up angry face you make when you catch an attitude. A term which originated in Jamaica, but with dancehall being a huge influence on UK hip hop, a lot of slang crosses over. And as much as I dig the production on this song, especially relative to his other joints, I also gotta throw some props to the live mashup remix he did with this song in Florence and the Machines, You've Got the Love. Everybody wants to be famous, nobody wants to be nameless, nameless, people act shameless, trying to live like entertainers. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It takes the hard-hating words of Dizzy's verses and lays it over the lush, fluttery production of the Florence song. I couldn't find a studio version, unfortunately, but regardless, the gorgeous instrumentation under his cutting social commentary punctuated by Florence's soaring vocals is a glorious experience. And when you get to the hook, the lyrics switch to her parts. And with Dizzy laying out the harsh reality of capitalism's grip on our lives, the contrast of Florence singing about having the love of someone who keeps you sane through it all makes the message ring that much stronger. Coming from Florence, it really means something. Even when she makes her happy songs, they don't sound like that engineered, antiseptic, bubblegum poppy simulacrum of happiness. When you hear the strength of her voice and delivery, you always get that it comes from a genuine place that makes you connect to the core of her feelings. And it was a strange happenstance that I came across it too, because it was a bonus track on Florence's first album that someone happened to request for us to review on the Going Off podcast last week. Like, we did not plan this out. Both things really just happened to show up next on the request list like this. So definitely go check out our review of Florence's debut album on our podcast available on the link tree below, but as for the original Dizzy Join itself, I'd give it a 4 out of 5. You can tell Dizzy legitimately wanted to take that original 89 sample and build on the concept, expounding on the ways the quest for money rules people's lives. And other than a couple of weak rhymes, I think he did a solid job of it. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell button afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree for Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.